good afternoon participants so we will start the session second session second invited talk by the dr a paramasivan an assistant professor department of oceanography and coastal areas i think no need to in introduce him again he is a very dynamic person uh, right from the day that is yesterday onwards uh, he is talking about a lot of things and lot, sharing lot of things during the lunch hours uh, that the new term you may heard about the microplastics so the research is going on the microplastics so he is he is talking about the more about the microplastics how the fish is taking the microplastics and how it is affects the human being so the such a kind of that as environmental person is here with us so i invited again dr s paramasivan to continue his talk on the second session of this first day so welcome you sir thank you very much for your uh, kind introduction sir so now i am going to discuss regarding the conservation of uh, sea grasses uh, uh, for uh, sustainable use and uh, nowadays uh, when we are talking about the conservation we are only thinking about the higher or big animals how to conserve the big animals always we used to think about dolphin or dugong or other animals when you think about the conservation you should know to how to conserve or create the awareness among the uh, people by conserving the small animals so without the phytoplankton there is no whale without the zooplankton there is no whale so in the every chain of stop of the every tropic level of the food chain should be conserved then only the sequence of the uh, flow this one uh, food chain will continue so now sir slide namang ge okay next please edu in the up on down na oh idu touch panna vandu okay atla ha okay okay so ocean uh, is considered as the respiratory system of the uh, earth means lungs of the earth so it is producing oxygen for life and absorbing carbon dioxide and other waste particularly many of uh, the people are thinking about the terrestrial animals planting more trees means it will absorb more uh, carbon dioxide and produce oxygen like that so similar to that in the marine environment there is a plenty of uh, marine uh, plant organisms like uh, phytoplankton sea weeds and sea grasses are there and the associated mangrove vegetation is also is there so these vegetations are primarily it is producing the food by uh, photosynthesis and the in uh, other words we can say it is a uh, main producer or maximum uh, dominant producer of the uh, carbon dioxide in the ocean as well as in the land because the 70% of the land is covered no so that the zooplankton population is the phytoplankton population is very high but it is we are not noticing it by our uh, direct uh, visual level distance so the sea grasses uh, also providing uh, many ecosystem services it is uh, so that it is called as ecosystem engineer so there are uh, marine flowering sea grasses are marine flowering plants uh, like angio angiosperms that lives in marine or brackish water environment you can see the sea grasses in the uh, mangrove environment also if you go to mangrove environment you can notice so many sea grass species and also in the uh, backwaters also you can see the you can observe it in a backwater also so it is a growing in group that forms a sea grass beds or meadows so the sea grass beds or meadows which is uh, uh, growing in a but below 15 meter uh, within 15 meter uh, depth so that it can receive the uh, sunlight to for, for make uh, for photosynthesis so it is providing a unique habitat for a variety of organisms and uh, it is evolved around 100 million years ago from the grass on land the, our uh, this uh, sea grass ancestor is uh, land grass only the both of them having same type of uh, uh, reproductive ability with 
this uh, seagrass also having same type of roots, thallus, everything is same. Even pollination also same when compared to the uh, land grass. And it is similar to the, it is lacking strong stem and uh, roots, roots by supported. It is uh, supported only by roots. And uh, the, it is attached with the thick roots and the rhizomes and horizontal stems with the shoots upward and the roots downward. So that is providing more strength for the seagrass so that it is uh, uh, strongly attaching with the sediments so that it is preventing the soil erosion. So there are uh, more than uh, 60 uh, species of seagrasses are reported worldwide under the family Posidonaceae, Zostriaceae, Hydrocaritaceae and Thymodaceae in the order Alice metals. And uh, seagrasses are uh, uh, found in the coastal waters such as bays, lagoons and estuaries. So it is found in both the temperate and the tropical uh, waters. So you can, um, except Antarctica, it is present everywhere. So it is found in patches and these patches can expand to form the huge seagrass beds or meadows. So in uh, some of the places in Pichavaram, near to Pichavaram, there is a place called Pildu Medu. Pildu Medu means, uh, uh, you can say Pildu Medu. That place itself named as uh, Pildu Medu. So uh, during the tsunami period, uh, that area, entire area was washed away. In 2004 tsunami, that area is completely washed away. So the seagrass meadows also has some maximum area is uh, washed due to the uh, uh, tsunami effect. And the eel grass, Zostra Marina was uh, sequenced in the year 2016 and they found out that uh, it is the, this, this is somewhat a bigger, uh, having a bigger leaf. Uh, that is the first uh, seagrass was sequenced. Now after that recently uh, in Australia, Shark Bay, Posidonia Australis was uh, sequenced. I will explain with uh, some diagram later on. So it is a protecting our uh, plant from the increasing buildup of carbon dioxide and the responsible for 15% carbon sto storage with a long-term carbon burial of 83 gram carbon per meter square per year. And the seagrass meadows are sequestered between 0 0.0122, 1.33 metric ton uh, carbon per hectare per year. So you, you cannot expect this much carbon sequestration in the uh, terrestrial plant even. So seagrass ecosystem provide high value ecosystem such as uh, when economical value the commercial fish is worth of uh, 3,500 uh, million, uh, uh, 3,500 dollars per hectare per year. So, such a valuable ecosystem it is. So, the tallest seagrass is uh, Zostria colossens. It can grow up to 7 meters and it, it is found in Japan. You can find it in Japan. And this is the very tallest uh, species among the 60 uh, odd number of uh, species. And in India, there is a 14 uh, species are uh, reported, 14 to 16 species reported. Some of the two, three species are in discrepancies. Uh, there is some uh, identification problem or they need to go for molecular identification, then only they can confirm it itself. So the, in seagrasses, approximately, it is covering 500 square kilometer area, including, because we are bestowed with 8,100 square kilometer, uh, kilometer distance of coastline, including uh, our mainland India, Andaman Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep, and Gulf of Manar group of islands like that. So, in which uh, 1,250 flora and uh, fauna is uh, living, uh, including uh, it is including the endangered dugong and the green turtle. So, these animals are mainly uh, li uh, living in that uh, environment and it is uh, uh, feeding the seagrass. So, in dominant species uh, is uh, Simodosia rotundata. Among this uh, 16, spe 14 species, Dominant species is Simodosia rotundata, Ceruleta, Thalassia hebrici, uh, Halodil uninervis, Halophila pinifolia, Halodil pinifolia, Halophila baccari, Halophila ovata, and Halophila ovalis. So, this uh, species uh, is uh, dominantly found, and it is uh, maximum species are found in this. Among this, some uh, around eight species are found in the Park Bay and uh, the Park Bay region, and the rest of them are found even in the Gulf of Manna region. Total 13 species reported. Uh, one species is uh, subspecies. So under the family Hydrocaritaceae, uh, you can see the species Enalus acridus, Halophila ovalis, and Halophila ovalis subspecies also identified by reported uh, subspecies uh, Ramamurtiana is identified uh, with the Ravikumar and Ganesan reported between the Marakanam and uh, Sitapuram backwaters. 
So, this type of subspecies is needed for uh, further confirmation and uh, these other species are uh, coming under the family Hydrocaritaceae and here you can the family Potomogenetaceae, Simodacea routine data, Simodacea serulata, Halidol unionervis, Halidol pinifolia, Halidol evite, Syringodium isoeticolium is uh, uh, placed. So, these are all the sea grasses uh, which is uh, located in the Western, Western Indian Ocean. Western Indian Ocean means uh, it is not uh, very near to our shore, it is near to the African uh, side, near to the eastern, eastern coast of Africa. So, there they have reported many species and they are nowadays, uh, they are concentrating about the sea grass restoration also. So, these are all the species uh, reported in the Western Indian Ocean. And the ecosystem, it is an ecosystem engineer, it is a co protecting the coastal, prevent the coastal erosion and to protect from uh, flooding and the storm surges. And uh, the fisheries, uh, it is uh, increasing the fishery resources, biodiversity is increasing the biodiversity. So, the uh, cultural value create uh, identity, provide tourism and recreational opportunities by uh, coastal tourism and climate regulating because it is absorbing the carbon and regulating the global uh, temperature. And uh, it is uh, ocean, uh, it is uh, make acting as a buffer in the uh, ocean acidification and it is uh, controlling the disease, particularly it is uh, trapping some of the bacteria and uh, along with the uh, particles, uh, sediment suspended particles. And it is improving the water quality by filtering the water by, by observing the nutrients and it is stabilization of sediments because the roots are very strong similar to the grass root, sea grass roots are very strong similar to the grass root. That is why it is standing, it can withstand in the, during the cyclonic uh, storm surges and that conditions. So, here you can see the, this is the biomass of the particular species. See, you can, now you can see how much percentage of the body. Here you can see in the Simodacea cerulata, uh, the first uh, Simodacea cerulata, the maximum the uh, root is 76.8 percent and the shoot is 23.2 percent. You can see the uh, part and here you can see the halidol uninervis. This also 73 percent, 73.4 percent root, 26.6 percent shoot. So, th this much higher amount of uh, root is uh, holding the seagrass and it is helping the seagrass to withstand in the uh, different conditions, climatic conditions. Because if the wave uh, shore is very shallow means wave action will be high. Wherever the shallow co uh, coast is there now, there the wave action will be high. In order to withstand in such a condition, it has to have more amount of more uh, strong uh, root. So, here you can see the, this is the reproductive ability of the, you can see the reproductive ability of the adaptation of uh, seagrass, Posidonia oceanica meadow. So, here the root itself, it is a viviparous root like that. The root, the seed itself can synthesize the, uh, here you can see this is the fruit, this is the seed, the fruit is dispersed. This fruit is having photosynthetic pigment. The this uh, seed itself having the photosynthetic uh, pigment like our egg, how the egg is having embryo, that embryo is providing food for the fetus, no? like that it is giving energy to the uh, seed. So, it is floating and it is landing in new uh, some area and it is attaching into the substratum, slowly it is entering into the sand area and it is attaching and it is started to grow. Here seed phototropism is occurring in the bottom of the uh, uh, stem in the stem area and here root hair is adhering into the bottom. So, this is the different uh, type of experiments they have conducted with the bubbles, sand and uh, fiber. So, in this kind of, uh, with the different type of materials it is uh, erecting the root like that. This is the sandy area, here you can see that. So, this is another method of uh, reproductive uh, capacity of the uh, seagrass. So, this is a fragment is forming, this fragment is uh, transported to another nearby area. So, this fragment is attaching into some other uh, area long distance either it may be one kilometer either it may be near, nearby area wherever the suitable the sandy substratum is attaching and it is settling and started to grow in a separate uh, plant. 
in the similar way this root is this root is extended nearby area like the grass how the grass is growing in our land no? like that it is growing and it is attaching into the nearby substrata it will grow continuously the similar type of uh, seaweed uh, post uh, posidonia australis is uh, spread over 180 kilometer radius in shark bay of australia in the similar way so here you can see this is another type of uh, transport here the uh, root is uh, the separated and it is natural type of natural uh, uh, plantation naturally this plantation is occurring this is removed naturally and it is settling into the nearby area and here it is erecting their root and started to grow this is one type of uh, another type of reproduction here this is the reproduction you can see these are all the worms polygate worms and these are all the crab larva shrimp larva like that so this pollen this uh, this uh, here you can see the marked area is attached uh, with the seagrass pollinating pollination uh, this uh, what to say pollen grain so here the pollen grain is attached into the body where the zoea is grassing which is night time it will go to the seagrass bed in night time it will attach uh, when it is going for grassing the pollinated uh, pollen grain is attached into the body of different uh, animals and uh, sometime it will swallow it here is the pollination by marine invertebrate this uh, figure a is a magid zoea larva with a pollen grain in a digestive tract here po pollen grain is present in the digestive tract so uh, this uh, next one is the thalassemia dia zoea larva this is the second one so this is having carrying the uh, pollen grain here this is the polygate larva polygate larval forms so here it is also take carrying the pollen grain so similar to the um, our land air, uh, land grass land grass how the um, pollination is occurring in land grass by with the help of insect or bees honey bees like that no similar to that here also pollen grain pollination is occurring with the help of some animal this was recently found that here the researchers have confirmed the crustaceans insects that pollinate uh, uh, like uh, land plants no isopods copepods ostracods myrcid shrimps tanids kumasians and zoea larva crab larva is uh, acting as a pollinator here uh, you can see the polygate worm like that what are the why to why we should the important uh, we, we should conserve the seagrass because first we as i said in the previous uh, first uh, beginning itself people are thinking about only when the big animal is affected big elephant is killed or tiger is killed means they will uh, think about what that but uh, they never think about the basic if see, there is no seagrass there is no turtle there is no uh, seagrass there is no dugong sea cow so it is a food for them so there is no food the some of the sea turtles are coming more than 5600 km or 6000 km from australia this australia to uh, coming to great nicobar island i have witnessed some leatherback turtles it is weighing around 1 ton weight that turtle is coming for nesting to that much area like uh, green turtle green turtle is coming for nesting so why it is coming it is having the biological clock at the time of uh, uh, nesting it is coming and even one turtle is laying egg for two times it is laying 140 eggs around uh, in one time so when it is coming it need a food lot of food for uh, its uh, uh, to deliver the egg it is similar to like uh, delivery human uh, delivery in human no? like that uh, painful one if you see after uh, laying the egg the uh, turtle will nest for rest it will take a rest for 3 4 hours in one place it cannot move because it has to dig out more than 1 meter deep it will dig out the sand it will lay the egg it will disturb the area without knowing anyone and it will leave the place so it, it requires mainly the sea grass uh, as a feed for uh, green turtle so it is providing food and habitat for a variety of marine life around 1250 species have been identified from the sea grass area so when you compare the sea grass area or plain area the fish resource will be more in the sea grass area and it is giving um, shelter for in many ways uh, it can it is giving protecting the animals from the 
predator, it is providing food, it is acting as a nursery ground, it is acting in so many uh, type of uh, uh, role. So they can stabilize the ocean bottom with the root system, otherwise the soil will be eroded. It is uh, filtering the runoff sediment and uh, feeding and supporting the need for more than 7 million billion people and achieving some level of climate stability. If there is no seagrass means uh, still we with the global temperature would have in increased. And seagrass meadows support the productivity of 20% of the world's uh, biggest fisheries through nursery habitat provision. So unlike uh, other environment, so it is a stable environment during the monsoon season, if you see, due to the increasing or decreasing salinity, due to inc decreasing salinity, the seagrass marrow will disappear completely. So if you go at the time, you cannot find out any seagrass marrow, only the mud will be there. So if you go after two or three months with the normal salinity conditions uh, during the month of post monsoon like that, there will be a rejuvenation will be there in the seagrass meadows. So it is contributing to stabilizing our climate, already I told like that. So deforestation, same like uh, while cutting the tree in the terrestrial environment, how would you uh, plant the tree? You know, similar to that, we have to plant the seagrass so that it will capture more number of uh, more amount of carbon in the from the atmosphere. It will mitigate climate change, and uh, deforestation will leads to loss of uh, seagrass meadows. And uh, if the, there is no seagrass nearby, means the resource will move to mangrove area or coral reef environment. If coral reef or seagrass uh, environment is there, means the mang from the mangrove environment, these uh, juveniles will move to coral reef and seagrass meadows. And it is filtering the coastal environment, cycling nutrients and reducing the bacterial pathogen, which is uh, capable of infecting the human because it is attached with the seagrass uh, leaf along with the other debris. And these are all the area which is uh, uh, marked in the red color. No? These are all the area where we hear the seagrass meadows are found in um, throughout the world. Here you can see this is the, this is our India. Here up to Gujarat and up to here uh, whole east coast of India, we have plenty of uh, seagrass meadows. So this is the uh, red area is uh, seagrass meadows. Here you can see the Andamalakshadivs. And here in the Maldives also there is a seagrass meadows. Here up to the northern part of Australia, seagrass meadows are there uh, to New Zealand. And here you can see the non uh, Australian, uh, this one, uh, Pacific Ocean, uh, sorry, Atlantic Ocean, uh, North uh, West Atlantic Ocean, there is a plenty of uh, seagrass uh, is there. Here this area is a temperate region when compared to our area. And here you can see the eastern coast of, uh, coast of Africa also having uh, the plenty of seagrass resource, but in west coast, uh, the seagrass resource is very limited with the Cymodosia. This color is indicating Cymodosia uh, population. So in India, we have the uh, seagrass uh, distribution in um, <coughs> Gujarat, Arab in the um, Lakshadivs, um, in Goa, in Gulf of Manna region, uh, in um, the east coast of India, like uh, near to Andhra, Chennai, and here you can see in Odisha coast and Bay of and Andaman Nicobar Islands, Gulf of Manna area. So it is uh, helping to boost the local in, uh, economies through supporting vibrant recreational opportunities. We can use, use it as a tourism uh, area, coastal tourism. We can develop uh, coastal tourism. And the seagrass beds act as a nursery. And larger animals such as sea cows and sea turtles are uh, already uh, recorded in, in some northern part of Fog Bay. Sea cow is uh, uh, recorded. So they have some of the people, those who are working uh, like uh, Womkar Foundation is there, Forest Department is there. They have recommended better we can uh, uh, declare this area northern part of uh, Park Bay up, up to from Adhram Patnam to Amma Patnam. If they are going to declare as a, a Dugang uh, reserve uh, site like that. So there the fishing will be banned and the restriction will be there hereafter. They are going to declare very soon. So already it was the news came, the newspaper. So this is uh, here you can see the dugong is uh, consuming the seagrass along with the, this fish, convict uh, surgeon. And this uh, turtle, green turtle, Kilonia midas, are, it is a key herbivorous for tropical and subtropical neritic habitat. And uh, some of the people used to say that seagrasses are uh, uh, 
because of eating sea cow and uh, the uh, green turtle, the sea grass uh, uh, meadows are degraded. But uh, in uh, I, I too never accept because uh, when we are doing the research work at Muthupeta mangroves, we, we are when we are collecting the socio-economic data around Muthupeta mangroves, one uh, one village person told, "Ard dinne kaad ariyadi." We used to ask them some different questions. So, how many cattle are going? How many cattle do you have? Whether your cattle is going for grazing to the mangrove leaf or like that? That time they told in '97 they told '99 uh, '97 7, 99 we had a project. At the time they told Ard So grazing is a natural phenomenon. This dugong and other animal will come and eat the fish, or the seaweed, the sorry sea grass. Even then it will grow. In one side it will eat, and another side it will grow. This is a natural phenomenon. You cannot compare with the natural phenomenon with the, the artificial one, artificial damage, what type we are uh, damaging. So this is the uh, micro, this is the mollusk. This is the close-up image of seagrass uh, uh, leaf. Seagrass leaf is called the blade. So here you can see the mollusk is there. Here some of the crustaceans are living. Here you can found the mollusk. And this is the mollusk and so many micro other micro algae is found in the seagrass uh, leaf. This is the nerve of the seagrass. So here plenty of uh, these animals are living in the uh, seagrass blade as a epiphytic organism. So that means it is providing so much uh, um, uh, resource it is within it. And here this is the beautiful uh, uh, image of uh, Posidonia australis. So you won't believe this. The area of the single plant is 180 square kilometers. 180 square kilometers. It was recently reported in July, June 1, June 1st. It was reported. Because they have done, one PhD student done uh, some work in this. She has collected many samples around the uh, area in Shark Bay of uh, Northwestern Australia. And uh, she found that uh, all the different uh, leaves, all the leaves are having same type of uh, um, uh, genetic information. So by using different uh, mark by molecular markers, they have analyzed it and uh, they have done a lot of work about the confirmation of this, uh, uh, this plant. They finally, they found that the whole plant up to 1,800, 180 square kilometer area, no? this is a single planet, plant. It is originated from a single plant. In one side, it is uh, developed by using the polyploidy by the seed germination. In another side, it is uh, spread like uh, um, asexual reproduction no? by spreading nearby by using the root, it is expanded. So like that, it is expanded. And uh, this was the... Uh, here the, it is found in the shark bay of Australia. The genetic analysis has revealed that the underwater fields of waving green seagrass are single organisms covering 70 square miles. So it was, uh, it has grown um, the copy of 4,500 years old plant. It is having that type, that uh, 4,500 years old uh, plants copy. So this is another view of the Posidonia australis uh, uh, distribution. And this is a close-up view of the Posidonia australis plant. Here the, how the sea grasses are naturally, it is affected. In the natural way of affect, uh, in natural impact is high precipitation during monsoon season leads to uh, removal of leaf and sometime it will uh, remove with the roots. And when the uh, fisherman is using anchorage, anchor, they are they're throwing the anchor when it is taking out, there will be a seagrass will come with the anchor with the roots. So they are damaging in similar way in the Tory area or wherever they are going for fishing. Because it is quite natural in Park Bay, because in the Park Bay maximum depth, depth will be 3 meter deep. Up to if you go near to the Sri Lanka border, the depth will be maximum 3 meter, that's all. So to reach 2 meter de depth, you need to go for 4 kilometer. We tried. When the first NAC committee came, no, one, uh, one, uh, one uh, expert came from Kashmir. He wanted to know near to the, no, he wanted to see the border area. 
when we are taking him, we went up to some few six kilometers like this with the police coastal security force uh, boat. So at that time, we checked for scuba diving. We are unable to reach maximum one and a half meter. That is the depth. So in that area, if you put the anchor, if you take the anchor, means definitely some seagrass will come out with the anchor. So and if you throw the net, and net will take more amount of uh, leaves. So push net, trawl net, bottom set gill net damage the seagrass and the coastal pollution like sewage pollution, coastal tourism and uh, nowadays uh, people are dumping many of the things, particularly chicken, uh, poultry, feather and uh, waste, everything they are directly dumping into the sea with the whole heartedly and the sewage pipeline, there is, you can see plenty of sewage pipeline in our area. So directly it will, they are discharging the sewage into the sea. So that is uh, increasing the neutrification, nutrient level. So due to the increasing nutrition and nutrient level will leads to uh, uh, decrease the oxygen level. Anoxic, it will create an anoxic basins like that, dredging. And the loss of light due to sedimentation, if the sediment is covering seagrass leaf means it will lo lose its uh, ability for photosynthesis. So it will die. Aquaculture and uh, shading or the uh, eutrophication and sediment deteriorate, it will deteriorate. And uh, here you can see the beach clearance, tourist facilities, uses of, usage of herbicide. If you are using herbicide in your home, that uh, herbicide will reach the sea. Whatever you are using, uh, insecticide, herbicide, pesticide, fungicide, whatever you are using in our land area or in our fertilizer you are using our land now, that will be washed through the river runoff and reach the shore and it will reach, uh, it will leads to degradation of uh, uh, seagrass in the coastal. And uh, here you can see the coastal development like uh, using the destructive fishing method, uh, dynamite fishing, using some uh, band uh, trawl net, uh, like that it will lead to uh, this one, uh, damage. These are all threats, agriculture runoff, temperature increase, urban infrastructure, urban industrial runoff, cooling waters from the power stations, thermal power stations, and nuclear power stations, dredging activities, aquaculture, boating, and diesel, uh, everything will increase the, uh, degrade the seagrass uh, uh, meadows. And here you can see the invasive species, like uh, recently we have introduced uh, some five years before we have introduced the, the Kappa Vegas alveraceae. Well, one, one group of people are objecting the use of cultivation of Kappa Vegas alveraceae. In other type of, other group of people are encouraging, it is okay, good. But uh, it is, uh, due to its vast growth, it may cover the coral reef as well as other seagrass meadows when compared to other seagrass species. Because the grass is very less when, uh, for uh, Kappa Vegas uh, alveraceae when compared to other species, because it is an exotic species. So here you can see the propeller, how the propeller is damaging the seagrass. And this is the boat scar. So grounding the boat, here the due to the depth, less depth, the boat is touched to the bottom of uh, the, the sea. So it is removed this much amount of uh, seagrass in a single uh, trip. Similarly, you can see this is the boat activities. The boat is removed, the uh, net is removed, or boat is removed, or the anchor is removed, this type of seagrasses, see, like a road in our uh, uh, grassland. It is made like that. Here you can say this, this much area is removed. This is the chain they are using, anchor chain. You can see the anchor chain. This chain is removing the, removed the seagrass. Here they are using the anchor, which is touching into the seagrass bottom. And here in uh, Tondi Coast, this photo is taken. This is the removed, this uh, amount of uh, seagrasses is uh, removed by the uh, fishing activities near to the shore. The, while well, they are cleaning the net, this much quantity is uh, removed from the fishing net. And sometime, naturally, some dead leaves will be uh, reach the shore. And here you can see that this is the previously settled one. And this, are, this is the freshly uh, removed seagrass. Uh, so this fisherman is cleaning the net. Here, see, these are all the fresh uh, accumulation of seagrass leaf, which is coming with the different types of net, like Nanduala, gill net, like that. Here, the how can you restore the seagrass by using different type of uh, uh, methods like natural recolonization. And this approach to seagrass restoration focus on water quality. If there is a sufficient level of water quality is there, water quality parameters good means you can transfer, uh, naturally it will grow. If there is a 
problem in the sea grass water quality water is turbid it is having higher amount of hydrogen sulfide formation means it cannot uh, <coughs> grow well the growth will be affected before um, selecting site for sea grass transplantation one should know about the uh, site whether the site is very suitable for sea grass uh, transplantation is there any previous history is there whether it can able to grow in a particular area like that we have to analyze so this is the propagation sea grass can be propagated in estuarine waters by application of seeds directly so previously we have done uh, in when i am doing my uh, research along with uh, uh, dr tangaraj now he is a scientist in serb dst npdf he is uh, dealing the biological uh, side uh, division along with him his phd work was doing ethnic culture cultivating the back uh, sea grass seed in a uh, medium in the laboratory we tried and we have transplanted the seed in the tangachi madam area near to pamban area and we have adapted some of the method but uh, survival rate was uh, almost very less in the case of asenic cultured uh, seeds and uh, higher in the naturally transplanted seeds translocated seeds and here uh, this is the some of the awareness program is sigras restoration is done by the omkar foundation and uh, mr balaji he is my junior uh, he has uh, alumni of uh, ts in marine biology he has done lot of uh, work and even he has uh, done awareness created awareness program from kashmir to kanyakumari to chennai and he has done some work like sea grass uh, restoration and he is doing work uh, so many research work and uh, uh, this work uh, conservation type of work and uh, this is a cymodesi and syringodium transplantation at park bay using bamboo frames and uh, coconut ropes he avoided that uh, plastic uh, bamboo rope with along with the nylon uh, rope because since it is uh, polluting the environment that's why he avoided so this is uh, the luxuriant growth of uh, sea grass cymodesi and uh, syringodium species after uh, may so within one month it has grown like that this is the restoration this is the restoration activity was done uh, by sdmri and uh, professor uh, jk patterson edward is my teacher uh, for uh, during my master degree and uh, he has uh, done lot of work in uh, sea grass transplantation and uh, coral transplantation and uh, coral survey in park bay and uh, kalpa manar area and uh, this they have done this type of uh, transplantation work in uh, uh, park bay region in 2017 and this is another uh, 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 researcher done devendra nadavan he has done this type of work and by using the net he is covering the juvenile uh, seed like uh, how we are making coverage for to avoid the uh, other grasses so by he is protecting by using the net so inside the net there is a seed they have planted the seed with the see this is the germinating seed collected and they have, he has a transplant and here this is the uh, uh, sea grass um, meadows by the australian uh, sea grass posidonia australis uh, transplantation in some of the places with uh, some uh, artificial these are all translocated and uh, transplanted seeds so i have done this work in heavy metals accumulation in sea grass and uh, here this is the work uh, i have done uh, related and more so many works are not yet published and here by use by when i am doing this work we have found the sea grass the heavy metal level of uh, level in the sea grass is high so if sea grass is having higher amount of uh, heavy metal so if you discharge more amount of uh, sea grass particularly more amount of heavy metal effluent into the sea it will be transferred to one tropical level to other tropical level by biomagnification so it will reach to other level so that uh, the people those who are consuming from other one fish is eating to other fish means it will be transferred from small fish to big, big fish big fish to other human being like that in the way of biomagnification so this is the uh, government tamil nadu government is going to uh, declare that uh, start the first dugang conservation uh, reserve in tamil nadu the area between adirambadnam to ammapattinam they are going to declare it very soon and uh, here you can see with the there are so many challenges are there see for sea grass conservation main thing is as i already said if one uh, uh, celebrity dog is not well that will become a very big news throughout the country or throughout the world if no
nobody is bothering about what they are eating what they are going to eat how their children are going to live in the future world after 10 years or 20 years like that what they are going to eat either what they are eating is safe for them or not like that they never bother about it. so then no don't know about most of the people are not aware about sea grass what is sea grass maximum people don't know sometimes they may be knowing about the uh, sea weed but knowing about sea grass is very very limited and limited sociological recognition of the sea grass in coastal ecosystem many of the people do, don't know what is sea grass so if you know the importance of sea grass because it is very important for global reducing the glo- global temperature and if they know it is a primary producer the chain is starting from here it is giving resource and here, here only our fishermen is catching more fish means if they know they will think about the conservation that's what we are encouraging people for community participation so local people should encourage should be encouraged to join in conservation activities along with the government officials or ngos like that then only we can take the conservation measure into next level otherwise today i am going i am planting the sea grass today evening i will come back i will go after one month or two months like that uh, like that to see visit the place and with, within this two months who is going to uh, use that area that local people will use that area so if you give the uh, um, duty for uh, uh, what to say in charge for the people you just please take care about this area so it will increase the productivity in your area it will help for your fishery resource enhancement, enhancement of fishery resource like that means people will participate understanding threatening activities of the local level so we have to see the what are the factors are threatening in the local level means then in particular region either anchorage boat anchorage either um, dredging activities is taking place either pollution discharge is there like that we have to monitor expanding our understanding of interaction between socio economical and ecological elements so what are the socio economical elements are present in that particular environment so if the people are uh, some in if you go to some area the people will collect if you go to tangachimadam people will collect the shell in tangachimadam area near to pamban region you can see they will collect the shell by using the sieve like that why they are collecting like that if they collect in a shell like that in many area means there won't any sea grass growth will be there they are collecting small dead shells i think if you go to if you get a chance to visit pamban bridge after pamban bridge you can uh, witness that people will collect the shell by using the sieve like that so in that place there is no possibility for growth of sea grass similar to that in many places people are collecting the crab uh, this one in mangrove environment they are collecting the shrimp by hand so in that area also it will be disturbed like that so we have to give create the awareness to the people and the sea grass research should be expanded to generate scientific inquiries about support conservation action so how can we increase the conservation activities what is the lacuna is there for conservation like that and increase the understanding of the sea grass and the climate change necessary adapt the conservation strategy because increasing uh, if the people are able to understand the sea grass meadows means even they can cultivate the sea grass meadows in the mangrove environment or in the store region so if the people come to know that okay because increasing 1 degree temperature is not a small issue it is going to increase the sea level rise coastal sea level rise if the sea level rise is happen means most of the in around the th- three four countries uh, will submerge into the water they have to go to other country only they cannot survive even our lakshadweep will get away it will be completely sub- submerged so demarcating the so first thing is managing waste water introduction of waste water discharge of waste water into the sea directly without uh, treatment so we have to recycle the grey water or means uh, waste water demarketing no wake swim zone so offshore the nesting beach can be win win offering means should not damage the in uh, seabed area or the sensitive area or uh, <coughs> uh, we have to um, uh, encourage the people or we have to uh, intimate the people to uh, not do not swim in this area like that so legislation we have to make the law our framework to reduce the risk of threats by enhancing surveillance making different law to protect it and regional effort to increase awareness to conserve seagrass 
and monitor the ecosystem changes and manage their services and users between, for example, we can exchange the knowledge between Sri Lanka and India. So because our distance is very less, uh, between maximum 35, 35 kilometers will be there. So in order to protect the environment in the both side, we can exchange the knowledge, how long, how much area it is increased, uh, which area is uh, degraded, like that information we can pass from uh, the people. Okay? So that's all. I thank the uh, secretary, principal sir, and the UGC stride director, Dr. Radhya Madam, and the organizing uh, committee members for giving me, giving me the opportunity to deliver the lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Now the session is open for the public for the question session. Question session. You can ask some questions. Uh, covered with Kappa Bike as well, what is it? Yeah, it is available. I mean, uh, it, so we, we, we need to uh, observe it for long time uh, observation. For example, if forest people will object it. Already in Tundi, we try to uh, cultivate Kappa Bike as well, what is it? Near our center. At the time, the people said that it will spread very rapidly and it will cover over the seagrass meadows. And even we have cultivated after that. But uh, CSMRA, CSMCRA, they have. From CSM yeah, CRA. yeah, CSMCRA submit, uh, supported for this cultivation because uh, Dr. Ganesan is my senior. Okay. Uh, so uh, he, I know he also delivered a lecture by in the same place. He supported that for that cultivation because uh, we cannot say it in a single day. We have to manage. It's not the about the support, sir, uh, because uh, he uh, submit that report about mm. and the and uh, the. Kappapeka salvarisi is spread over the coral reefs only. Mm. That is only identified in the islands, especially in Kusade Island, okay. particularly in, in the smaller area. Okay. In the year 2002-2010 studies, or in, the, in a decade studies. Okay, okay. But, and, and one more thing, Kappapeka salvarisi is cultivated through the vegetative propagation only. Yeah. It lost the vigorness, it's a genetic, through, uh, vigorness of the genetic uh, reproduction through the spores. Okay, compared uh, to Philippines and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So th this is the only controversy is going on, but I am not. It is not thing proven. Is not sure, uh, not proven one. Actually, For it affects the signals. Yeah, there the we even the, even the Hindu reporter asked this question. When we are uh, uh, start initiating the culture, see uh, Kapabaga Salvara is culture, he himself asked the question. This type of uh, problem is going on. No? How do you, uh, you cultivate the Kappa Vegas alvarez in this region like that? He asked it on the spot. But it needs long time monitoring. Then only we can say that whether it is really affecting or not like that. Yes, Especially Kappa Vegas alvarez covered with sea grasses. So no, I, it is I it, want yeah, to because we have cultivated in a large area. Okay. By cultivation, I am telling. We have cultivated by using rope culture, single monoline oh, mono rope culture method. Yes. So in that area, there was a plenty of sea grasses. So see. after that, we did not monitor it. Our aim is to culture the sea grass. Sorry, sea weed, kappa bagus, alvarese, but not monitoring the sea grass at that time. So hereafter, we may, I may, I too will observe it whether it is and happening or not like that. Whether it the population is reducing or not like that, I too will observe it. Okay, thank you. I want to add one more point. Okay. 